Thank you for tuning in to Homeschool Homesteaders. Today we're going to continue the garage kit and we're going to focus on electricity. But first some disclaimers. Number one is I am not an electrician. I'm a simple do-it-yourself do type of guy and I figured it out. Number two, there are many options on how to run power to your garage. Watch all the YouTube videos and do what you think is best for your situation. And this is just how I did it and a past inspection. And of course, you would want to do some homework. Basically, get some books either from the library or maybe you have books lying around your house, which you purchased, which I'm not a big fan of them. They're not very helpful. But the best websites, in my opinion, will probably be uh, howtowireit.com. Here's some uh, images off their websites. They got nice images for you to follow. And doityourselfhelp.com. Here's some images off their website. And once again, they got some really cool diagrams that you could follow. And of course, you pray. When it comes to electricity, do a lot of praying. Always use a 12-gauge wire, which is yellow in color. Otherwise, your power tools will not work. And use 20-amp circuit breakers. Uh, only on the lights, I use the 14-gauge wire, which is white. Now, when you go to the store to buy all your electrical needs and you see a sign like this, obviously, it's not a good sign. Well, the first thing you do is you dig a trench from the garage to the house, 18 to 24 inches. 18 if it's in the conduit. This picture shows two copper rods that you will have to pound into the ground and they have to be six feet apart. So this is the box inside my house. We're going to run wire from obviously the main panel. And so we're going to have to rewire some wires and then we're going to drill a hole through the outside. You can see the fiberboard sheeting and basically, yeah, we're going to have a big mess when we're done. So about three, four hours later, that's how long it took me to rewire this. You see a set of wires. This goes to the sub panel and then we have two six gauge wires running to a 50 amp breaker. And so then we have the wires, they're gonna run down. There's a hole drilled outside and they're gonna connect with the special cables for underground. So this is the wires outside the house and this is where it's gonna go inside the garage. You're gonna have a total of four wires running through a conduit. Takes a very long time to shove four wires through this plastic tube. And the reason why it's really hard to shove four wires through a one inch conduit is because you don't get much leeway room. Here I cut out a section of a pipe, shoved in four wires, and good luck shoving that 16 feet. Plus, you know, up and down, it's 16 feet from my house to the garage. And so it took us a long time, so get a bigger conduit. Don't go for a one inch, probably go for a one, in, one and a half inch. And this is the junction box outside, all closed up. That's where we splice the wires. And you have four wires, a black, a white, a red, and a ground wire down this plastic tube. And once the inspector left, you could now bury the cable. So take a shovel and start digging. And here we have the hole all buried up. So you came and tell that there was a trench here. And here I'm going to move up to the garage. You can see how it looks. This is how it looks from the outside. And then we're going to zoom down here. You see the rods buried. They're six feet apart. Here's the other one, the wire, the copper wire. And it's not that hard to pound these in. Now I'm going to fast forward to when my house is completely done. And here you can see the final project of how it looks. However, I must tell you something because I made a mistake when I was doing this. And what I forgot to do was I forgot to leave some space for the siding to run behind the conduit. I made it flat against the house, which was a very bad mistake, but I kind of figured something out. So what I did was I did some uh, J channels around this conduit. I know it looks ugly, doesn't look very good. And even if you look inside, it is waterproof, but like I said, it's very ugly. 
So make sure you leave yourself some space so you can run the siding underneath the conduit. Now we are inside the actual garage. I have a Square D Company circuit box. Here is the cover on the ground. I will put it up later. All the circuits are pretty much 20 amp except the lights and they're labeled. I have one for the south wall. Then I have a northeast and the east wall. Lights. Lights are running down to this very expensive arc fault, whatever, 54 bucks. And it's the only 15 amp. And then I have a northwest plus west wall plus the garage doors. Like I said, four circuits is all you need and it's plenty. Here we have a GFCI, one circuit. You cannot have the cables running through the walls. They have to go parallel. So here I have wires running with the studs and all the power goes in from the bottom and out from the top. So this GFCI outlet will protect every other outlet on this wall. They're all regular outlets and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, technically eight, but you can't see the last one. It is very important that the wires are in the center of the stud, not too close to the edges. Otherwise, the inspector will not pass your work. Same thing, more than one wire in the center. And these clips that I'm going to show you, they have to be every four feet. And next to the outlet, it's about eight inches. Otherwise, yeah, the inspector won't pass this. Here we have a GFCI protecting the circuits on the east and the northeast wall. One GFCI will protect all these outlets. I also have a three-way switch and I wondered why it was so expensive and it's because it's a glow-in-the-dark one. Now I do want to draw your attention to the fact that you will need outlets for your garage door opener. I made them 10 feet from the garage door, which was kind of a mistake because fast forward when the garage door opener is installed, it's way too close. I did get lucky, but in the future, probably I would prefer 11 or 12 feet away from the for garage now, door. For now, I just got simple LED lights for my garage, but these will change throughout the years. I also have a light switch and Bad lighting, of course, but the first light switch is for the inside. The second is for the outside. Turn it on and you can see the lights shine. Once again, these are not the best. They only shine at night. And back inside, like I said, first light switch for inside, second light switch for the outside. And here we have a GFCI for my east wall. And this outlet will protect all of these outlets on the east wall. That is the end of the run where I'm pointing at. Very simple. And I'm gonna take a step back so you can see my garage. You can see the outlet six feet apart, four feet from the ground. Don't mind my kid who's walking in my garage, but very simple. Circuit box in the far corner. This is how it looks, plenty. I started to have problems where the circuit breakers will trip and I had no clue why. And then I realized that with the garage open, wasp will fly inside the outlets. They will seal it up with some mud, lay eggs, and the maggots will actually trip the circuit. So I had to poke everything out, all this mud, vacuum it out and put plastic covers. This way protect the outlets. Uh, this is something we deal with in the month of June in Minnesota. So this is my garage as it looks from the outside and let there be light. So at nighttime, this is what you get. Very bright LED lights. So and back inside daytime, this is the circuit box when the inspector inspects. He puts a sticker and he scribbles something on it. But the sticker is very important. So the total do-it-yourself cost for wiring a detached garage, and this includes everything from the wires to the light fixtures and even the garage door openers, but the grand total is 1506. And from my previous videos, we know how much we spend on slab, pouring slab, the framing, and the electricity is 1506. So, so far the total is $18,404.
Uh, electricity is about 6% of the overall cost of the garage and the Menards kit does not include the electricity price. This is something extra.